Are we on um are we on air? We on motherfucking air, baby. Oh, this is our, this is our, oh, we are air. Air. Guys, guys, I wanna say yeah, swallow, big, it. swallow it, digest it, take it in. Guys, we just had like a shot of Bacardi Period. and when I mean it's running, it's literally Listen, running. I'm a lightweight. I shouldn't know where the drink is going. Why do I know its destination right now? It's here. I can feel it. It's literally it's right, here. right Yeah, I can feel With it. Warmth. Yeah, <laughs> you shouldn't know what it's doing. <laughs> Guys, I want to say a big, big welcome, welcome, welcome to Cocktails and Takeaways. Yum. It's your girl, Madam Joyce, in the building. And this episode, do you know what? I don't even know I what episode is fucking out. It's like, what, 14, 15? You know, really, and you've, been, you've, you've done really well. I appreciate you've you, my really, really, really well. But guys, if you haven't got a drink, get a drink. Listen, I'm crunk right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Period. I'm having a great time. Say, and I'm listen having... to me. Listen, listen. <laughs> listen to me. You said... And the lovers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to welcome my guest. I have an, a phenomenal woman here right now. She is an entertainer. She is an internet personality. You've seen her on TikTok. You've seen her on Twitter all over the gaff. <laughs> it's Elaine, baby. Hello, hello. It's me, Elaine, baby. You already know the thing. Ew, yeah. bad girl, bad girl it's for that. I feel the peg, you know, I feel like, you know, just some people, like, ask me, up, I, I and blush. you're looking peg. And they blush. I was saying, I, I was saying really to blush. Elaine earlier, I was like, I've not seen her done up. Usually she's wrapping her scarf, she's wearing wig. Yeah. You look good, sir. I know, thank you. What, the pink thank for you. me, yeah? Period. I feel like it gives me that youthful tinge, that youthful glow. Just you feeling a bit I mean? exotic. Yeah, today. I just wanted to just, you know, I just wanted, I don't know, I just had this feeling that it's just like, I'm coming to meet you, I gotta show out. Period. And you did. Period, thank you. It's the highlight blinking for me. Stop. You know, I have to look for even if you're almost there, I would say not. You know, manifestations. Stop it. You know, God's here. She's rich. Don't mind her. No, I am. I am. Look at her trying to be. Yeah. I saw you. I saw you getting verified on Instagram. Uh, like that. So don't mind her. Don't mind the see verification. Don't mind that her. That one cry. That one game. That one even surprised me. That was God. That was God. All I can say is that one cry was God. Because the devil really tried to take it away. I just did like, oh more. I have to start again. I have to this. I have to that. I come back and I just come and wake up in the morning. And I see a blue tick next to my name. I said, God. Like, and do you know what? Yeah. And not only did God bless you, I'm sure he would deal, deal with those yeah. uncles that stole your... Can we talk I'm about your... Her. Can we talk about your... The Instagram hacking. Oh, uh, basically, what happened was... Basically, there was... <laughs> no, I'm actually going to talk. So basically, there was this girl, yeah. So, obviously, like, I used to actually talk to her, like... Uh, we were speaking, like, to each other ever since... I was I was on, like, 200 followers. Like, mm-hmm. I, she was just somebody that... I hadn't really ever met her in real life, but she was just somebody that, like, I just kind of spoke to online mm-hmm. and stuff. You know them types of people. Online yeah. friends, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, obviously, um, she, she obviously is in the church. She sings, obviously, same thing with me, of this and that. So, she must have done a story when she was like, oh, if there's any soprano singers about... If I even come and show you her page right now, like, if there's any soprano singers about, let me know. So I'm like, oh, she needs some sopranos. I mean, I even sing soprano, I can't sing it. So, Beyonce! Yeah, so I was like, of course, like, yeah, girl, let me know when's the rehearsal time and everything. So obviously she's like, um, rehearsal time is just this and that, blah, blah, blah. I was like, cool, and then she started talking about Bitcoin and trading. Oh, and I was Jesus. just like... You know what? Yeah, I'm not really into that stuff because I I don't have a clue about it and stuff. And obviously, I haven't even had money to even come and invest and put my to be taking risks like that. Uh-huh. So I said, like, cool." But obviously, she said, "No, it's calm. Just obviously download this app." So I said, "Downloaded the apps and stuff." And obviously, the moment I downloaded the app. Um, put my Instagram deal through Bob's your uncle all I saw was strange logging from Abuja I said Abuja but this girl's from like I she from South London like we didn't in Abuja bro oh so when that's God. when I said the epicenter of 419 that's how I knew that I got 419 and then on top of that here's a, here's another, here's a part that I didn't even like even tell people um, afterwards yeah they then sent me like a video um, not, no, they, no they then told me on WhatsApp to, for me to send a video saying that I that I won £25,000 um, because I invested £300 or £500 in Bitcoin they was like yeah make the video um, otherwise we won't give you back your Instagram <gasps> so from then I told my manager when I told my manager my manager says stop replying to them right now and I said Kim listen you can keep that Instagram if you think for a second that that's basically you're basically putting a virtual gun to my head basically you're basically saying that oh if you don't do the video then um, then we'll come and then I'll delete your Instagram I said like, fine take it you, in this life yeah you can't attach yourself to these things and something like this will happen my own account wasn't even in my own hands I said listen if somebody wants to blackmail me like that they can take it I'm not going to lose you my integrity you see all these hush puppies God will deal with do them do you know what Jesus I mean because now, now I know now I know how they're making their money and it's they're crazy. smart you know because they'll come and target I was even thinking that they probably even made that story just to get my attention yeah. like people ah oh. 
People it's are being mad. Routine. That's what I'm saying. People are getting finessed every single day. So you have to be and do you know what? Yeah, this is why I I can't really respect fraudsters. I'm gonna be honest because you are now. I'm on the other side. I actually understand. You that. understand. You mm-hmm. are literally profiting off the heartbreak and the and the the naivety of people, and you're making money off it. And they they don't have any hearts. It can be your mom. It can be your dad. It doesn't matter if you have cancer. If you like being a wheelchair. Listen, if you like being what, uh, dying. They even let even even die. They don't mind you dying. They will come and collect oh your money in the grave. God. It's so bad. And you know what? I don't even know like why. Like I'm thinking like can you not find any other creative ways to obviously like make money and stuff like you'd rather just use it like this. But like I said, I'm people. on the other side. So now I actually because I never really like so I'll fraud whatever whatever. But now I'm like rah like you lot are in Nigeria. You'd rather come in. Why can't you go and scam a rich white um, Instagram or influencer or like you know, your you know, your you're, you're, you're um, I look like you guys I look like I'm from Abuja if you didn't know I'm from Ghana and you come and, and you come and now come and rob me but the people that have caused your poverty why don't you go and hack your president's um, Instagram account but mine it's crazy you know what I mean that's why I'm like they just target that's like you lot are not even whoever's doing 419 yeah, I don't know if you lot are even listening to this but you are not real forces sorry you, if, no, you can't fraud, if you can't you can, if, you can't, if you can't commit fraud against those that actually Matter, are, it doesn't matter the, because to be honest, yeah, the, those people are the What's biggest. What's me? I don't, do you know how much money I have in my account right now? If you sweep me, <laughs> it's <laughs> your own, it's actually your own problem. Me, I won't feel so if it's up. What's in my account right now? You yeah, just, you, you, you enjoy it. Just you mean you want to rob me? Like, I'm, I remember now, I'll never get a time yet in college when someone stole my card. I didn't tell them until three days before. I didn't, I didn't tell anyone until three days before the um, student finance dropped. I didn't care. I was like, they robbed my card. I feel sorry for them. Everything will just be the kind in the show. They'll come and <laughs> just come <laughs> and embarrass yourself. Listen, I've, I've reached that level of poverty was someone stole my card I didn't care I was, like, I, was, I was even laughing I was like hey, you stole my card ha! you're going to be embarrassed in every shop that you go to no contactless for you Listen. no contactless I'm telling you there was there's one time yeah um, there was a guy on Snapchat that was doing that I was doing a 50% off all those you know 50% oh, yeah, off people, and yeah. can I just say side note influencers that promote that stuff they're absolutely disgusting there's influencers that even promote there that are influencers stuff, that promote oh, 50% off JD 50% off House of CB I have seen that stuff I have been tempted and it's fraud it's terrible yeah. but anyways I was about I was about 18 here and one of those 50% off guys came off so I was like okay cool I think I ordered stuff like maybe £150 worth of stuff so I now sent the guy the money the guy now blocked me. He said, send, send the money to this account. <sighs> After I sent the money to account, the guy blocked me. I said, yeah, you think you're bad? Don't worry, I'm bad on. I now called, I now t- uh, Googled the uh, sort code and I saw it was a, it was a HSBC account. I now called HSBC. I said, hello, HSBC. I believe that this account number 456789 is being used for fraudulent activity. I ordered something off Instagram and unfortunately the guy blocked me and took all the money. Cool. HSB said, don't worry, we'll, we'll undergo investigation. I said, good. Two weeks later... Yes. The guy re and After he blocked me... It's now, a testimony. Two weeks later... He testimony. Now, he now re-added me back on Snapchat. Mm. Sent me a voice note. Uh-huh. Oh, please, man. Honestly, like, you know, obviously, I'm sorry, innit? I will give you the money, but obviously, HSBC is trying to shut down my account. Uh-huh. Good for you. You, uh-huh. you dead you boy. You took it to the people <laughs> that mattered. You, 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 you thought you could finesse a yeah. finesse? Naja must Naja. The you guy tried to. He now came back to beg. Listen, that's how. That's how you do it. I rate. I rate you. I he rate now tried like to you. come. You thought you could finesse me. The guy Here now. Yeah. I said, yeah, listen. Because if he can say he, even when you give up the so called an account number, he's giving away any sort of swaps whatever. They said this country, you will get found out. They, they Easy. Said, oh, You're please, smart. Man, I'll give the money back to you. I I'll want. Come, I want, want you. Me. I want ladies to do this. Are you guys listening? Do this. When somebody wants to finesse you, go to the people that matter to go and report them. You can't finesse. Listen. Them. Them, them luck off. He said, I can't access any of my money. Good, good. for you. Good. You, you can't. Even, you think you're going to enjoy me? life? You thought you could play with my ass? Period. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm literally giving you a standing like, Not me. Because I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm an honest woman. I'm actually an honest woman. I don't I don't steal from anybody. I love that. My, I'm hardworking. Mm-hmm. All the money that I make, and I people make. People are trying to, trying to be doing our shortcuts. You, you four and nine, I tried to get my account and all that stuff. Yeah, you've been stealing this small, small money. It's not even going to last you long it's not even give you like no it's not even like real, it's like, not longe- worth it. no honestly, longevity honestly. no nothing you're going to have to keep on committing crimes every time it just listen even if that money they use for the fraud invest it into something so that you can stop their lifestyle
lifestyle. It's like you almost like the lifestyle. They do you because like I don't fraud. understand how you're 40, 50, 60 uh, and you're still doing fraud. The hush puppy them, man. Now I understand. And look where they, they now they have flung that one in a hole somewhere in, in, in um, Hamrika somewhere. They have, yeah, they have cut it. But it's because you flaunt stuff online. If they kept it quiet, maybe they wouldn't be found out. Imagine you stole something. Hey, yo, yeah, I'm doing this and it's like your account is telling you that you have like a, what, like a normal paying job. So how we, of course, the uh, activity they, is they illegal. Can't, yeah, listen, I, listen, everyone should make them. I'm, I, I don't disrespect anybody because, you know, people got to do what they got to do. But I believe in legality. No, now I'm believe... on the other side. I don't. I don't yeah, so people got to do what they got to do, but I didn't. Like, when it's fraud, it's fraud. I don't know. I can't. That one doesn't sit right you don't even hurt the people that matter. You hurt your own people. Your own people. Your own people they shake true. advantage with. It's crazy. On whatever. Do you know what I mean? The, even the person that did the, the, the half price thing. It's like to a, you know. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they'll have the balls to do certain things you know it's what I mean true. but when it's you uh, they can come on man there's not even valuing people of your own race of your own, own race community. of your own people it's that's where it does you know what I mean it's ah. very embarrassing embarrassing yeah, extremely embarrassing but anyways let me yeah. move on to, let me move on oh, to the yeah. next conversation because I want I want to get to know you oh. I want to get to know you girl fire the questions get to know me baby girl yes honey so yes. we have a we have a little warm up that we like to ask all the new guests on the show try and get to know them okay. obviously you know, I told you a lot of bad bees listen to this. We got Period. a lot of we had to show out. We got a lot wow. of sexy, sexy women on this show. Really? Listen, yeah, I've I've met a lot of the people, the yeah, supporters. Guys, DM me. Yeah, you have my social. I should put it on there. If one of the if one of the bad girls was to see you in a bar, what drink are they buying you? What's your drink? Do you know what? Um, first of all, tequila shots. Just to get me, like, you know, warmed up with them and everything. If they want to, you know, chill. Did y'all hear that? Sit down, some chill. You know, yeah, we're sat there. We see you want to buy me a drink. I'm like, let's get, let's get, you know. Sorry. <laughs> I need to behave myself. No, no but, you behavior. know, but let's get comfortable. Mm-hmm. Let's get comfortable. And then afterwards, I'm probably thinking, do you know what? A brown drink with some apple juice. So mm-hmm. maybe, like, Captain Morgan's apple juice. Or, like, um, I feel like maybe a brown drink kind of gives me, like, a... Hennessy. Like, yeah. Yeah. But like, like a, like a, like a, I don't know why I feel like it's even more mature. I feel like spirits is like, turn up, turn up, you know what yeah. I mean? And then brown things is still like, turn up, turn up. But I feel it's like a it's, sexy turn Yeah, up. maybe with some wine. It's an expensive but turn one up. time I did actually mix um, brown juice and wine together. Like, Echo Falls was like the... The, the, mixer, the mixer, I died. That wasn't that wasn't a good thing. So maybe we won't do that. But yeah, maybe like a little like you know spirit shots, um, lovely pina colada as a cocktail mm, that have one. Pina. Yeah, pina colada. Pina. With some, yeah, with some <laughs> shot like shots. I feel like shots and a nice cocktail. Shots and a nice cocktail yeah, is always the one. Definitely. See, I don't get people that mix either. You're telling me about Echo Falls and to keep and uh, yeah, I did that. Huh? I don't you know. I was in uni, you know. Sometimes you just do that, like, you know. You're so in, honest, when so I went fresh. to uni, like the drinks I was drinking, it's like I was ready to die. To be honest, at uni, anyways, I was I was this close to go. I want. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? It, it really does that to you. Uni it is, really does uh, that to you, honestly. I don't think I've drunk as much as I drunk as when I went to Listen, uni. Listen, everything. Because it was coping mechanism. Like, when you're in uni, you, when you're doing work from 4 a.m. and then you're now waking up at 4 p.m. It's not normal. It's, it's that not is normal. not how us humans were supposed, like, we were supposed to be in the forest eating mangoes. All of this stuff is extra, bro. It's very extra. It's so extra. Nah, uni definitely nearly killed me. I, <laughs> I, funny enough, I was watching something and, and he was talking about how people, they'll go and use cocaine to... To um, vice themselves during uni. And yeah, I went so to like, yeah, I, I was literally like on the same course as some guy. Um, it was used like English. Was it English? No, I think it was Romanian. And he called his dealer. He's be thinking, oh, she's going to pick up like a bag, like, you know, oh, Ben's or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. Because he called up his dealer. His dealer pulled up like outside like the lecture room and everything. I'm like, mm-hmm. cool. Here's me. I thought he was just going to get like a score or something like mm-hmm. a normal person. No, he brought up like a 20 pound bag of cocaine. <laughs> so I was like, is this, is this the one you put in your nose? And then you sniff it the and all that thing. stuff, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, do, do you want to try? Do you want to try?" I said, "No, I'm very, very good with that. I'm no. good with my greens and drink. I'm just you know a drink. Mean? Period. You know what I mean? So do you yeah. know how funny that. But that's what I'm saying. These, these, I want all your people. They, they, they be taking can. ketamine." I, I have a story about ketamine. Y'all don't do drugs. Listen. So what happened was, yeah, I used to work in... No, I have... The jobs I've done, yeah, I've used to work in security in there. Mm-hmm. So obviously, this was when I was like... Obviously, I've come to security. I have, like, my hair, like, a bottom path. I had, like, my boy trousers, my shirt. Like, I look like a stud. Like, mm-hmm. I look... I look like I would... <laughs> 
I was in my element, my LGBT, yeah, my L element, but yeah. So we see I was doing that security and stuff, to the blah, 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 blah. Obviously, the rule in security is that if there's ever um somebody that's injured of your same sex or gender, you can only deal with them. So obviously, there was like a female, obviously, I was with male staff. Obviously, not a lot of um, women do security anyway. Yeah. So obviously, I was the only female staff on the shift. And there was a white, obviously, girl... And basically, she was passed out on the floor. She was quite heavy. And, like, her neck, she couldn't even support her neck. So I had to support her neck. So she was quite heavy and stuff. And they told me to go and put her in the wheelchair. I'm like, I can't physically carry her because I'm not strong enough. I said, I'm going to need you guys to help me. And then this thing, that's obviously fast forward. They obviously had to help me and stuff. And I had to basically carry her neck, like, because she couldn't. So you know that when you have a newborn baby? Yeah. That's how horrible it was. And then I asked her when she got a bit sober, I was just like, what did you take? And she's like, oh, we just had, like, some um, Ray and Nephews and wine. And I said, what did you take? And then they were like, yeah, that's all we had. And then then I asked her boyfriend, I said, what did you take, please? Because this is not alcohol. This is not, this is not alcohol issue. I've dealt with people just, well, this is not alcohol issue. And obviously, he was just like, all right, are we going to get in trouble? I said, no. He's like, all right, we, we took some care and then we took some alcohol. So I said, exactly, you're not going to go to the police. <laughs> but if I come and write down that she's had alcohol, you're only going to harm your girlfriends. Yeah. Like, there's no point. They need to know. Yeah, but I was just like, when I saw the effect of that drug, I was like, guys, don't do drugs. Literally, I couldn't, she was completely limp. Like, she's completely gone. I thought she died. I literally no. thought she died. I thought she died. That's what something that's scary. To be for I was an nineteen animal. years old. An animal. No. He's like using it to pump horse. Yeah, pumping it. Tranquilizer. Yeah. No, that's why. To I'm tranquilize just... a horse. Oh no! And you're take why? 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 I didn't. Why? Why? No, I don't understand. <laughs> where are you guys trying? Where are you going? Where? How? Where? Where are you on the dance floor? Do what? Why don't you want to want to be on the dance floor? Why? You know what? That's and you know what? Yeah, it's all those drugs that they take that can, they can listen to that. I get it now. You see that music that just sounds like noise. No, but it'd be hitting though, because when you're in, you have to be, you have to enter to a a, a dimension of consciousness to actually (laughs) that that type of thing. No, it's, it's, but you when you are there, it's because we don't understand. You see, when a dog is talking, do we understand? But you have to be in the dog's realm to understand. So you have I'm to be telling in their you, realm to understand. You see, that type of is this music when you are drink when you are using ketamine. And even that, when I'm at the gym and I'm tired, it starts to sound good. So I can't even imagine. Trust that's me, because I'm weak. So I can't like, imagine. And I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, 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 hey, yeah, so baby, we're hearing. Yeah. Ooh, 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 and I hear. Uh, yeah, yeah you know, no, that's what I'm saying. Listen, <laughs> hey, you got the words. I'm lucky. I love it. Listen, that's I love it. I love it. Listen, shout out to TikTok. Listen, yeah, she needs to get her knees up. Sis. Yes. Listen, I'm Put so happy that she's able. Put my auntie on. Put my auntie Habib on. You know that um that that Arab one. Habib, do 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 do. Where the line is? Was it Hesbus? You lot that on TikTok. You lot will know that one. Hesbus. Oh my God, he's been. Wait, wait. Ask the dance and the dancey. Me and him like that. You know that one. You know that one. Don't be a bum. Hey bum. But no, but I'm like, if you put a match would be under beneath that, it's gonna pop off in parties. Listen. DJs, listen, drop pop off that parties. song. Period. Listen, now TikTok is really giving us the new new bangers. Period. I and love it's that. The other, it's bringing the people out. I'm wait for. I like it though. Don't you like it? Yeah, I listen, do. I told you, see, I see, see, listen, ah. I'm telling you, what the bad boys and bad girls know, like, I'm come see, they come have a good time. Y'all got me smiling. Girl. Guys, all right, I want to ask you something, because oh, we have please. a segment called Question of the Week. Yes. So all the bad boys and the bad girls on Instagram ask a, no, they don't ask, I ask a question, and then there's a poll in which they answer and give me their opinions, and all I right. would like to ask you Okay. the question of the week. So are you ready? Okay, guys, you okay, guys already know the vibe. Question of the week this week is, do you believe in smacking slash beating your children as a form of discipline? Okay, this is this is now talking to my future self. Um, right, uh, no. Mm-hmm. Um, as a main form of discipline. So the reason As any form of discipline. Th- as any form of mm-hmm. discipline. Okay, then no. Mm-hmm. I would only say that because you're teaching your child not to do something because of... Fear. Fear. Mm-hmm. And I also feel like um I just feel like the origin of beating your children for me it doesn't sit right. I feel like it originates from slavery or like colonialism. Mm. And I feel like when we I think when they came to because obviously when they came to colonize our countries, um obviously including um African um, Africa like African Americans and the Caribbeans, but 
they also came to Nigeria, Ghana, and Africa. Like, they, how did they get the people to those places? So yeah. they obviously came to our places and stuff. But I felt like how, like, the way that like, we have been conditioned to whip our children and to beat them, I feel like that's what happened to us by beat them. Beat them into submission. Uh, yeah, I think it's like, is it called social learning? When you just copy something that you know. And also, I feel like as... um black people I kind of feel like we're not really emotionally in tune or maybe as like our black parents our African parents I feel like we haven't really been able to communicate with our children mm. on their level type of thing so I feel like we've just used that because that's just what we've kind of been like because for me when I'll be afraid of like getting beats or something I'm like you're not afraid of doing the thing because it's wrong you're afraid to get beaten now so it's like yeah. it's not you, don't, you still don't even understand why it's wrong mm-hmm. and then I feel like those types of people end up you know just repeating the same type of behaviour because they don't know why it was wrong but they just got beats for it type of thing there's so many ways that you can even if you take tiktok from your seven-year-old child now i'm blunt. sure that is enough yeah of a punishment for them because there's more to lose out on oh yeah okay fine you're grounded okay fine um you're not gonna have your phone you're not gonna have this and that because in this day and age i feel like that's enough and maybe you can find other mechanisms maybe the naughty step or so forth but obviously i feel like when i have my children depriving them of what they would usually enjoy it mm-hmm. is probably something that like and, better option, and then yeah. for them to work towards um you know like getting it back then i think that's a good form of discipline and obviously in that time you don't just ignore them you tell them why it's wrong you, you go yeah. through them you actually again i feel like a lot of our parents didn't know how to speak to their children on their own level yeah you know i mean okay like i'll be like okay i'm gonna tell you why i actually took took your phone away from me it's because blah 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 and then we'll have a conversation about it and i said and i'll say and maybe they can come and say their opinions but obviously i'll say no this is why da, 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 da. obviously they still might be grounded and so forth but there's other ways you don't have to hit your child honestly like, it's so interesting your own child you didn't even ask to be born and you're hitting it giving you're, it more you're whacking them up. do you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's so so interesting because a lot of the people that watch the show come from african households Definitely. and that was the main form mm-hmm. of discipline yeah but it's interesting because we had a complete split this week and 44 percent of the bad girls and bad boys said yes absolutely i believe in in smacking and hitting but 56 percent said no it's not needed and i found it so interesting that we have now come into a place where we realize that the structures of how african people have treated are treating their children is not correct. And it's interesting that somebody was saying that it doesn't teach your child to learn a lesson, it teaches your child to be afraid. And do you know what's mad? I find that the the, the parents with the most, that, that beat their children the most, create children that know how to lie. lie. You just make your child adapt. Listen, the you just, parents... just adapt, like, to your... You know the parents life. with the strict children... The, especially like people like uh, you know PK son and daughter them yeah. lot can lie ha! 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 lie them a blood clot lie like it just of course you made them like create a survival mechanism that didn't need to be created you know what right? I mean right legit it's so, so it is so 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 scary and I just think it's so so interesting that you know growing up in an African household for me I feel like beating for me as much as it was a form of it was it was a a way of conformity it also was a way to mask the fact that a lot of african parents have lack communication skills and are also very unemotional yeah Definitely. Very unemotional. We need to understand that, like, as a people, we've been through, like, a lot of, like, compression. So mm-hmm. things like self-autonomy and taking things like our own emotions into consideration hasn't really been put in place and stuff. Mm. Also things like, I feel like, I'm not trying to say anything about, like, anyone's actual parents, but I'm just trying to say that maybe, like, the generation that they're from, it's like, it's almost like maybe our parents are from it's almost like they couldn't wait to get into the position so that they can come and do what was done to them because it's almost yeah. like you can't wait to have that power back and that's why sometimes I'm like people be like oh you have to have your children I'm like why so that you can have other people to control and then for to be underneath you like why not, where's that not only people that you can control but a lot of parents are living out their dreams through their, exactly, through their children definitely and to carry on the legacy and all of this and all of that hmm. and it's like even just things that and I think obviously I've seen a lot of people on TikTok um 
kind of talk about how obviously like obviously they're African Americans how they talk I feel like they're a bit more progressive than us because obviously in regards to that whole sector maybe because they've been in the western world for like quite some time and stuff mm-hmm. but I, I'm thinking try let, let us try and talk to our parents about oh we're not an extension of you we're not your asset we're not this we're not that they, would, they, they won't be able well, to well individualists I mean do you know what it's even a blessing the fact that us as entertainment entertainers can stand here because I know there's a lot of people who want to be entertainers and who want to be creatives mm-hmm. But I can't because mum and dad said that you should be a doctor. Oh my god! And it's so yeah. and and to the point where like me, I, I was very rebellious. My, mm-hmm. Honestly, my mum, me and my mum used to clash like this. Yeah. But there's some people that have really been knocked into conformity yeah. where they don't live them lives for themselves. They live their lives for their parents. Yeah, and you know what? And and like obviously, like it's kind of like a fifty fifty thing because I guess I kind of understand where it comes from because us as Africans, obviously in regards to pushing our children to become doctors and lawyers or social workers or anything of that sort, it's because we want to kind of drag them into something that will give them a stable source of income because we come from a place of you know lack lack of abundance, you know, mm. migration, um, you know, depression and stuff, you know. The, all of these things, is like we have, like, a lot on us. So our parents obviously did genuinely try to obviously help us out and stuff because they... I think other people of other races, you know, maybe, like, you know, f- m- fortunate, like, you know, English people. I say English people, <laughs> white people, or any people of that sort. Obviously, let's say their parents can probably invest, like, 100K, 200K into their business. Into and their like, business. We don't have that. We will hustle have, them a hustle, yeah, boy. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Struggle so every, them every, a struggle. Yeah, everything to do with, like, social class and stuff. So, unfortunately, by the grace of God, I, my mum was, you know, okay with me going to perform in art school and so forth. I love then, that so man, yeah. I, yeah, but then I even still had to do sociology at uni just in just case. Just in case, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But again, it, honestly, like, I've had this whole thing about, like, jobs and stuff and I just feel like when you're that talented God is going to make a way the, the most religious people will be our parents yet you don't have faith that your child will make it into what they want to make it in mm. and it's just like so much fear anxiety lack of abundance a, a scarcity mindset that we've all adapted from yes everything. there is a big scarcity yeah because yeah. of patho- path- was it was it pathologies hmm, English and grammar uh, no hmm. yeah, pathology is something that we see that is passed down from generation to generation yeah. so wherever our great 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 grandparents experience obviously it's still going to be in our DNA do you know what I mean so mm. they're just, it's just kind of being passed down but I think that's where the whole lack of abundance and scarcity mindset comes from with a lot of Africans because we don't really come from much because of what's happened to me, um, well, me absolutely us, do you know what I mean I so, feel yeah. like this is such an exciting time because you know there's been such a I liberation this is the best time, this is the be best time 100% for me I, I love the liberation that we have not the liberation in society but in the liberation that we have created for ourselves where mm-hmm. we're no longer tolerating bullshit period we our generation to... said no we said sorry we I can't suffer no. like my mum I'm not going to suffer like my mum I'm not going to do it we're not doing it to, and, and I love that I love the people will call it rebellious but I call it it's, it, it's a sense of because you have to create your own life and yeah. you have to like actually create like you have to change things like mm-hmm. and then everything is a reflection like we've just got our colon, col- colonialism I'm sure um, like you know when your parents were born or when your grandparents were born that like, we, we've we just we are the ones that are experiencing life from mm-hmm. there was a time where girls could even go to school the fact that we right. couldn't even read and write and because we are so well spoken you know what I mean? There's it's so facts. many privileges that we don't even see every single day. So I feel like now is the best time to be the people that we are. And I'm so thankful to be in this time. And that's why we have to just make the most of it. Yes! To start things off for our children and for our families so that we can give them what we didn't have. And that's how we can move as a people, as a race. That's how we all evolve. That's how evolution happens, especially social evolution as well. Hmm. I just want to say... Uh, hmm. No, because... The it's word. Fa- word. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Chills. Woo! Preach, preacher. Amen. Preach, preacher. I just want to say a couple things that some of the bad boys and bad girls said on Instagram about the question of the week. So Mm -hmm. Tam said, although it made me avoid certain decisions, it created some sort of trauma where I always think that I'm doing something wrong and expect someone to yell or beat me. It's true. A lot of people are really dealing with some trauma from their childhood. Like, I I find that there's a lot of people... You you, you see how sometimes at work there there are... I'm going to say women especially who are afraid to to be outspoken or afraid to say something because they feel like they might get chastised for it or they feel like someone might um, oppose them so they'll just rather be quiet. A lot of that stems from childhood that certainly when somebody is an authority, yeah. to speak, uh, authoritative figure mm-hmm. you are too afraid to speak out yeah. about even wow. even to the point where you're too afraid to speak out about the things that you don't agree with yeah. or the things that you and don't like. And that's what leads you to, as an adult to be that like, non-conference 
representation yeah. and wanting to not stay all of these things yeah. and you're now carrying the same trauma and again it's slowing down the evolution mm-hmm. I think what I'll say our people need to do is to kind of maybe take a look at our behaviours and maybe take a step back and be like, oh, but where does this originate from? Like, who, like, okay, cool. Like, why did my great grandma beat me? Why did, why did, why, who, who, who told us? To but I feel like we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't like to go back in time. And we just kind of take things. it, they take it for what it is and run with it rather than actually understand the genesis and the reason as to why we do what we do. But, um, Andre Itai said, if, uh, if the child decides they are above reason and logic, then I'll physically communicate. So he's saying he's pro beating, smacking your children. There's some people that were, that were saying there was a difference between beating your child and smacking your child, like maybe like a flick on the ear or like a, you know, just a little pop in the mouth. Yeah, because sometimes I guess like, you know what, because sometimes like, I can't lie, like when I, um, when I used to look after like my, I don't think that's so much, but like my niece or like my nephew, like when I said mm-hmm. like, especially like my nephew was going through his several twos, I'm mm-hmm. like, how is he going to know that what he's doing is wrong? Mm-hmm. I can't communicate with him, sit down and have a conversation with him, but he scratched my face. Yeah. So that's why I'm like, okay, maybe sometimes like, I don't see this thing where it's like, it just, maybe yeah. that would like, but you don't go and get the belt and be lashing them for like hours. That's, that you is stress what, from You work. know what my mum used yeah? to I never used, I wouldn't say I got physical, like, yeah, but my mum obviously I came from a place where my mum used to do punishments. Mm. Uh, did you do the thing where you lean on the wall and do that one? Yeah, so the, you would the do leg squats. Exercise. You would do squats. Like, oh, you do. Where did they get that from? What type of know. pure gym thing is that, bro? Fitness class. People what? ask me, Joyce, why are your legs so strong? You gym? know, I can. You know, ah, I can leg press like hundred and fifty kg. I guess it. They think it's because I'm a gym bay. Listen, when I was doing up and down, my mum told me up, down, up, and I was doing squats for oh! one hour. Up, down. Where did they get that from? I don't know. You know. Because that is a good work. I can't lie. When I went to the one gym, man, one, I can't lie. I went to a fitness class and they were doing that. I'm just thinking, you see, African kids will be there mad at this. This is <laughs> just crazy. The fitness instructor will be like, oh, welcome to so good. Trust me, I've, I've, I've done that. I've been through it. Listen, you know what I mean? my mum was told me to do leapfrog, yeah? And then take me to, take me to, uh, Met- remember Meto? What was a meta? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll take me to a meta, yeah, and tell me to go out and drag food shopping afterwards. You can ah! imagine with the, with the trolley. I'll go out and drag food in Peckham. No, she's hey. nice. Maybe you were covering the shirt. I'm not, Listen, no, now my thighs are strong. Me trying to make a positive out of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, but your tone, day. Like, <laughs> shout out to Ma for those meat oh, frogs. Because now my legs are so thick. <laughs> You are thick though, I mean, online. Girl. Listen, baby, that's all those Snickers bars, baby. <laughs> I don't eat it, honey. And they at least it goes to the right place. Okay, Listen, I'm it goes to the right place. Low, because it does get to my belly. If I release this trousers and I open this, everything will fling out. This one, everything will just come out. This leather jeans is holding everything together. No. But I know you've been, you've been working out there. Uh, me? Do you know what I actually did? Lockdown, guys. So you see how I'm looking now? You see COVID. I didn't really know who I was. Who am I? Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> I was like, now I'm literally getting back into myself. So it gave me like a year, year and a bit. Let's say what December 2022. Yeah, they look different. Trust me. If I don't, don't say anything. Just sh- honestly, I've been yet. really trying it. I've been really trying it with my body, you know. Because Listen, I feel like I'm not, I'm not getting mad at it. A whole COVID happened. You know when I got COVID, I thought I was mm, gonna die. It's wow. I said, Listen. When I survived this, I will never hit my body again. Because that same fat body was the body I was relying on to survive. To survive. You understand? Oh. That's why. Can you see? Do you understand? The Can body that I was condemning and my belly. You're cutting them that same belly. Hey! To, 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 no. to hold you. Yeah. To, to keep me alive. You, bro. That's why I'm like, me, I will never. Me, I'm, I'm happy about the fact that I'm alive. I can make it. I went to the gym today. I can make it. Yes. Gym today. Do Slim you know what I mean? So I'm gonna, stop, stop. Yes, limbers. You in the conference. I don't know what I'm saying. But she fine. She the one that's fine, bro. Listen, I'm trying to be like you, baby. I'm trying to be like you, when baby. I heard, well, listen, when I, when I heard oh. that I went to the gym, I felt bad because yesterday I actually ate four Snicker bars. No, but I haven't. Uh, this is the time I'm going to the gym like what, once, like this whole week. I'm just, <laughs> This Sunday, I'm, I'm changing ages, my though. life. I need to do better. Honestly, like I've been trying to be a lot more Look conscious good. of the things that I'm eating and Look things. Sorry. Sorry. How, how good? Ignore me. How good? Uh, 10 out of 10. Ah! 10 out of 10, bro. Don't say, oh, yeah. <laughs> You look good though. Listen, yes. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be sexy for you. Stop. You know I'm not straight. You can't be yeah, playing this. You can't, you can't I be can. playing. I'll okay. say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Okay. I mean, I don't mind, but I'm just saying, like, you know, stop it. No, right, we'll be, we'll be, do you know what I love on the on the gym there? You know the stab machine? People hate it, but I actually you I love it. love hate you when they ship. You definitely got punished as a, as a kid. By Trust me. That. If you love the stab machine, your mum trained you well. Tra- what did you do? I'm, honestly, if I signed up for the military, they'd be they'd been so... Ah! Cool. I'm Nigerian, I was misbehaving, that's why I won, baby. <laughs> that's why I won, baby. But yeah, I'm telling you, I'm ah. waved, I love it. to hot topics of the week a lot mm-hmm. has been happening this week and we want to talk about it first of all big congratulations to Cor- to, who? to Courtney Kardashian for finally getting engaged she got engaged to a very nice gentleman called Travis what's his name Listen, Travis Baker find what you love Travis Baker I you know actually like women that like tend to get divorced and remarry because I'm like you're going for what you want keep doing this so. even I saw Adele with one very nice chocolate man this week as well I saw that man I do you know what I swear she got divorced um, like not too long ago maybe was it last year or something like that? was it divorced yeah. or something like that and she's that's right she's with a nice she's, she's with a brother alone. Yeah, she, she with a brother real. I feel like that the soul she got in her, mm-hmm. yeah, she, she. I think the only person that can carry that. I is don't want to say she's a, a sister. I feel like she is, and you know she's from, she, from she's from Andy, you know. She's from the Nams. Yeah, she's. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I love? Let me say I love Adele. Let me just say I, I, I really am happy for women mm-hmm. that are no longer staying in relationships. Period. Sorry. Because of face value or because of shame, but actually leaving and or actually being afraid true of love, being alone. Talk about it, cause wow, yeah. that's deep. Yeah, there are a lot of women mm-hmm. who are afraid of being alone, and they will stay in relationships that are the so aunties, toxic. The aunties, they are so it's the toxic. Aunties for me, and you'll have your you have auntie for like her telling you, oh, but you say man, bitch, leave that relationship, leave yeah. that, leave that man Everybody alone. Everybody knows he's even cheating on you as well. He's cheating on you with everybody, even your bridesmaid, even your sister. Oh. He'll be cheating on you, but auntie for like her will tell you to stay in that relationship because of because she doesn't want shame and embarrassment. I'm I'm so happy that women are no longer tolerating bullshit I don't care let's be honest like there's some guys that you imagine there are men that will be slapping their wives slapping their wives remember like when someone was talking about hobos- someone was talking about hobosexuality hobo what is hobosexuality you know there are men that leech off of like women's houses apartments like um, rooms like you know them types of guys not where, hobosexuality yeah hobosexuality those are probably all the men that keep commenting on my on my stuff ah, they are they all, all the there's the only break men always want to comment on my it's stuff. True. They're leeches. They literally leech up like women's like home homes. So there's one guy in uni. Sorry. Um, <laughs> when he was on probation and he stayed with us, this guy stayed with us for like half the year. Didn't pay no rent. Didn't pay no bills. And so obviously my other housemates allowed him and stuff. And like. I would just like this is how hobosexuality works. Hobosexuality. Mm, that's oh. what someone said as well. It's not my it's not my cream. Do you know what? I'm here for it. There are some guys that need to be they need to redefine themselves as hobosexual. Mm-hmm. Hobosexual. Because I feel like straight being straight, being gay is for sensible people. You know what you want. Hobosexuality. That's for they need to so that us straight people we can know the difference. The straight you know, financially listen, <laughs> stri- independent tra- people. Trust me, us that are financially straight. Mm-hmm. We will say we are straight. Period. Those that are, are financially wonky, yeah. they will say they are homosexuality. Yeah. I like it. There needs to be a bracket of sexuality for broke men, for broke Maybe people. Maybe for because I thought the finances establishes the level of relationship that you will have. When because I, you're I don't want to say it because if, I, if potential, I, you're hoping that he'll become better. That's why you're dealing with the situation. Now. If, I, if I'm saying, if I start to say, it, they will say that I'm, I'm a gold digger. They say I'm I don't like men, so you guys be can rot to me. Or I'm not but how does it work with women? Like, because I, I had um Dammy on last week, who's gay, and we were talking about dates and things like that. Is it quite? Is it also quite equal in a, in in women gay relationships? Know, it's quite interesting. Now, I am what they would call a sexy. That too. Thank you very much. You too, <laughs> darling. Stop. I am an air. Okay, but um, you know, like. I think maybe, like, I've heard some cases where, like, let's say, like, you know, the masculine starts. Mm-hmm. I think the firms that they go through probably expect them to pay for things and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they might even feel like they want to pay for things. So maybe that's where the heteronormativity takes in place. Mm-hmm. But for me, like, because I'm, like, 
firm or like STEM. I've kind of had people pay for me. I've kind of paid for people. It's more like an equal thing. Equal thing. I think it depends on what type of um, dynamic lesbian yeah. you type of. Maybe maybe if I was a stud, maybe I'd be attracting different types of girls that would expect me to pay for different things. So you know usually I mean? like same with because same with like the gays that's like oh yeah you have the tops and then you have the bottoms it's also like the person who takes the more masculine route tends to have more of the, but then the masculine that's role. conditioning that's heteronormativity that, yeah. that's what we've learned from yeah you know, from conditioning yeah. yeah that's probably that's probably but with you you're like you know what I'm a, I'm a spoiler I'm a spoiler chick and if Listen, a chick wanna spoil me that's cool period if I have the funds if I do if I don't I don't like, you know what I mean like, I'm more I'm not I'm like in a, I'm think I'm in a safe area mm-hmm. yeah but I feel like maybe if I was a stud I probably would have had a completely different experience because I've seen some tics of studs saying that oh they want to be catered to they want to be looked after to because we're both women and all that stuff and I can probably understand probably how it might be for them you mm-hmm. know, because they will be affected by heteronormativity a lot more than I would mm-hmm. you know what I mean so yeah that's how I think it is I love that. Do you know, it's so interesting to see the dynamics in, like, in different relationships. I know. It's crazy. But it seems, like you said, it seems to be, it seems to kind of follow a similar route in terms of uh, the the kind of more masculine energy and, and Because the I don't think we've all gone through the same conditioning, whether you're dissing that we've all come and watched the same stuff on TV. Our parents have told us the same things. Mm. We've learned things from church, from, from society and all that stuff. So I feel that that's why heteronormativity, especially in the gay community, like always tends to like, follow through, especially with the men. I know that they have it, like, you know, a lot yeah, of <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, do you know what I mean? That's why I don't really know about them. But yeah, man, that's basically, that's, that's it. I'm like in the middle. Yeah, but I want to say, I want to say a big congratulations to Courtney Kardashian. I really love yeah. the. I really no, love, honestly, I really love like, them. like you said, women getting their own thing. Like I'm, I'm yes, here. Yeah. Honestly, I'm here. Let me tell you something. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but fling that broke ass nigga in the bin. Heard. That's that's all I have. fling fling him in the bin Heard. because he ain't got no. That stingy man will make you live, hate life. And trust me, make you feel like you're asking for too much. It's because you want to be treated and loved. Treated and loved, mm-hmm. right? Right. Because they can't afford it. Okay, leave me alone then. And go away. The thing is, people are coming at me because they think, oh, I'm just looking for someone for money. No, I'm I'm looking for someone that is willing to... That can to, allow you to enjoy life. To enjoy I'm life. I'm single now because I know that if, if I was to be with any woman, mm-hmm. I know that, like, I won't give them the best that they want, that I would want to give them, that mm-hmm. I would want to show them. But why must they come? Who am I in a way to kind of make you pause your own life of enjoyment because of me? Hmm. You know? I'm but gonna... like I said, not many people have that mentality. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. But thank you so much, my oh, good sister. Really? I want to. I want to get to know you more. Obviously, you are. You're an entertainer, oh, and I find it. And and I find it so interesting how I'm gonna say you. The UK community does not appreciate women entertainers, and I'm talking about people that produce their own things. Mm-hmm. People that. Um, create skits especially black women it's only now like someone like you people like Hema people like um, who's my favourite queen Michaela Cole that I've mm. really come up so oh, what yeah. can you say about the industry right now when it comes to, to being a woman a black woman in the production scene uh, I'm pretty much like so new to it mm-hmm. so like I'm literally like I've already decided to be a full time content creator for like a month now and it's really Get me, but I got push. They beat, got, are they trying to beat your you ass? Know what I'm saying, but like I'm talking about the you know money coming in. But you know what? I'm still trying to keep my head mm. like above water and stuff. But I would say like there was one show that I was watching, which is called I think it was I'm trying to remember. I think it was called a being black and British or something something to do with being black and British. And I remember like there was just like straight man them there. It was Michael Dapper. Um, was it Monia Chihuahua, mm-hmm. murder comedian? And there was only one female stand up comedian, which I think. Um, she was probably like queer anyway so mm-hmm. I was just like I don't know I was just like I saw no representation there's none the only representation that I saw was when I was younger remember Little Miss Jocelyn <gasps> that's the only thing oh, that my I God. remember that was what, that, what was that. her skits now you need to say something that what was her skits it was the one where in she... the name of Jesus in the oh, 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 which one <laughs> Um, what's it? There were so many um, nah, all look. men are blood clots when she was a Jamaican oh, woman. Yes. Um, what else? Um, when she was a cashier, if people squeeze it, equals five. Da, 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 da. She <laughs> did so when she even did. Um, did you go shit in the toilet? Like she's done. I 
have been so obsessed with a woman like that woman is basically the backbone of like most of like my content because I'm like I need to be as versatile as she was back yeah. in the day and stuff and that's who I meant to be so one day I'll be African mom tomorrow I'll be road man tomorrow I'll be typical black girl tomorrow I'll be news reporter the next day I'll be moving to a man like I'll always try and like be as versatile as she was she's one of my biggest inspirations but obviously I've seen people like Miss Little Miss Jocelyn and like, in regards to like having representation and stuff um yeah, Michaela Cole. I, yeah. Can I just say I love Michaela Cole? I love her. I may destroy you. Even from chewing gum to go from, from chewing, chewing gum, gum to that. You know, um, when she did, because cause obviously I started my, my career as an actor, um, and I remember I was applying for drama cool. schools, and um, I did chewing gum group dreams. So mm-hmm. when, when Michaela Cole went to drama school in, uh, I, think, I believe she went to Guildhall, mm. she actually produced and wrote Chewing Gum Dreams, which mm. was kind of the backbone of Chewing Gum. Chewing Gum. Mm. So and it, it's a whole script and it was amazing. Like you must she must have been like what, eighteen? When mm. she when she wow. read that? Yes, yeah, so she's like it, obviously going to drama school 18, 19 mm. and she wrote Chewing Gum Dreams and I read it and I was like, this is somebody that has not whitewashed themselves to appeal to a white audience but has taken her culture because you know sometimes they come and tell us that oh if you want to if you want to get to the top you have to kind of make more mainstream content now when they say mainstream yeah you you know know you know what it means you know what they mean by Mm -hmm. mainstream type of thing but I definitely love the fact that she did because it's always good to be because when you blow from being friends to your your true self the blow will feel, will feel ten, it will ten times better. Why am I trying to, as a black woman, why do I need to pretend to be something I'm not? Water myself down. Bitch, I'm from the hood. Period. If I'm you wanted to be, to be different, you should have gentrified my hood then. You should have made it affordable to live a good, you That's know, life. It. But obviously, this is what y'all going to get. This is what this I'm talking like, about. talent is there. Gonna get. You want the rhythm, but And I feel like, like as somebody who's in the entertainment business, that's mm-hmm. something I've been battling with because obviously, you lot know me. I'm very, very hood with it. I have masculine energy. I'm very, I would like to say, I'm very baby. different. Sorry. Just... I'm very different to a lot of women. Mm. So I was like, do, for me to appeal to the to the to the mass audience, do I need to feminize myself? Do I need to be a little? You bit know more... what? I've had those thoughts to myself. As Haven't well. you? Yeah. I mean, like you know how you just said that. Oh, yeah. you see me done up today. Yeah. I really should be done up more. But like, obviously, if I'm no, being... but, but that was me saying it because you're you're so beautiful. Do you know? Like people, people, people no, no, know like, you. I understand. I know that it's because you find me sexy. I do. But yeah, thank you. But <laughs> I told you I'd be blushing. But obviously, um, for me, I feel like do I have to have sex appeal? Do I have to do all of these things? Obviously, trust me. Sometimes I think should I hang time. my breast this week a little bit? Oh, show some cleavage. No nah, man, they're showing well. Sorry, what? <laughs> you know what? I'm moving like this is the first date. <laughs> yeah, baby. So where are you from? Like we trying I'm to know you. We from, from Nigeria. Yeah, but hey man, pearls to the people, bro. I don't know why I'm acting like an African American. Talk to African American. Yeah, I'm you from Ghana? What? <laughs> from Ghana? <laughs> yeah, I'm Ghanaian. 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 You're from Ghana. So what was you saying? I just got distracted by B. <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> no, we were. See, I can't even remember. I got, ah! No, but we were we were talking about um kind of having to gentrify ourselves mm-hmm. to appeal to mass audience. Definitely, but I feel like that also just, again, upholds the white supremacy. So by us being um, authentic to our true selves, we get to preserve our culture, yeah. the culture that we have developed and that will be left for other people to enjoy. Now, every time we keep on letting ourselves go to kind of be more digestible to the mainstream audiences, so we tend to actually end up losing a sense of ourselves. Mm-hmm. But I feel like true. there's so much... Um, People that we can also even if even if like those people you know what I mean if they don't get it <laughs> and stuff if they don't get it we can always appeal to our African audience mm. maybe make more content to appeal to like more black there's enough black people that consume entertainment absolutely and enough black people that consume I feel like the one, we're the ones that push things first before it does yeah. go to before it goes to mainstream we are the ones that the population. We, yeah, before it goes to the wider populations, mm-hmm. we are the one that pushes us and our people. But for people, but for somebody, because like I was, I was, I was at a um, hosting event yesterday, and a lot of people were looking for you know management and things like that. For you have just literally picked up a camera and was like, you know what, I'm going to use my experiences and I'm going to make them comedic, I'm going to make them exciting. So for someone that just wants to start out and do that, what advice would you give them? Just put your phone camera on, get a local tripod, or get something to like kind of level up to like your bodily level right oh my day. you right before every video that i do i have to write a script mm-hmm. if not a script the certain types of characters that i will portray for me that's just how i have direction i went to drama school when i was younger i feel like i can do improv i can do i can do improv but i feel like when there's a direction there's always something for you to add on to mm-hmm. so for example if you ever want to make a video 
writing a script before because you know that one that's even that's even how you start the process so let's say sometimes you might not even be bothered to film mm. oh i want to make this type of video okay what can i do you go and you go onto your notes and you write down different things they want to do maybe in the video or maybe different scripts and then the the, the idea will develop it will develop mm. by the time you finish writing when it's time to film you already have a map you, you already have, map, have direction yeah. so the filming is like it's okay, interesting. Easy for you, you grew up in performing arts. Yeah. I grew up in performing arts and I'm a very, I'm a script as well. Every episode I do Wait is to be sorry. Look at Destiny. Ugh. Every episode that I film is scripted. Period. Every episode. Even cool. as much as the conversation is flowing, mm-hmm. I always have an idea of Yeah, you have of, to have that. You have to have the structure. Yeah, definitely. You can't just be going willy nilly. Yeah, no, it's true, because when you go to work willy nilly. No, when you go to work, there's a timetable there for you to yeah. do. There's a assignment and task, there's mm-hmm. there's things that your manager wants you to do. So sometimes for me, like when you have like when you want to create something, you have to have like a skeleton for you to kind mm. of you have to have direction otherwise for, that, that's just with me as an entertainer I, yeah, I, me I, as well yeah everything that I write scripts um, characters um, song it's always the, the the best way to actually develop the best piece of content is to write your script mm-hmm. once you've written your script you have direction in filming so the filming ends, even ends up being 10 times quicker because you've already done everything you just look at it oh what, what wait what's next what's next oh okay cool that's it then by then it's editing time even from the editing the script will even help you edit because you know what's going to come next before. so before anything always write always write from when you write always find a way that you can actually find a way to create what you've written because when you write is well it's gonna get a bit spiritual when you write it you've already put your thought into this into the physical realm yeah so something that was in the spiritual realm in your mind in your soul in your body you've now already given birth to it i love as that and as you know in, in the written form so once you've written it you know even for example in the bible says that you know um you know god so was the word thinks, yeah, yeah. Do you know what i mean so like obviously like when like obviously whatever god god is spirit but when it's converted into a book now we in it the physical life. realm we have direction yeah so that's where writing is almost like a spell it's almost like you're casting it's something true. into I existence agree. you know what i mean yeah. that's what i'm saying if you want to set anything if you want to create anything new to your life write direction so that by the time you, your actions have direction to actually mm. manifest what you want to happen Period. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? Listen, I'm, I, Are you listen, crazy, I'm, bro? I'm, listen that, that whole section just filled my spirit so Amen. much. It's Amen. It's true. It's Amen. absolutely true. I don't Amen. feel like people understand the type of, as, as a human. Because when you have the you thought, have, yeah. you have to let go. When you let go, when you put it on paper, you've let go. So now you're even allowing more space for God to drop more things. More things, more yeah. ideas, more, more ideas. Concepts. And, and you, you know write what? them next one. And don't right? question it. Yeah. You know what? Not times. I'm oh, not, I don't my question God. it. And don't wait for perfection. Don't wait I until you that. have everything patterned. Remember, I started with phone. I started with the phone that the phone that everybody has. I, I they use camera. When I use camera, I put things together and then things obviously start to develop. Do you know mm. what I mean? So things will develop on your journey. Don't wait until you have everything patterned because by the time you wait until you have everything patterned yet it might be too late for me i've discovered so many things on my journey i have made mistakes you people know how many videos i've done is flopped like it's okay because i know that even though it's flopped i know that it's a lesson for the next thing that i'm going okay maybe i don't do that maybe i did this maybe i do that but you learn have put your pride and your ego to the side and mm. learn be, be humble before god and say i'm ready to take this journey even if i make mistakes i'm ready to learn from those mistakes and go forward that's life but I understand school has taught us to be afraid of failure, so you know. It's it's actually yeah, true. That's why. It's, I understand it's, it's a shame. We've been conditioned to a lot of things, but I think as an adult, it's our responsibility to acknowledge that and then go to our undoing. But Definitely. I want to talk about you. Obviously, I'm looking at, I'm sure a lot of people are, are looking at this right now and thinking, oh my god, you're so so beautiful. But then when you come when you come on, you don't care. You'll come with no makeup, you'll come with your cane roll. How do you deal with being authentic to yourself and not giving fuck about the opinions of others reason, I feel like the reason why I've done that is because obviously I know that I'm beautiful like regardless like of myself but the reason why I've gotten to that stage is because I just feel like um the stress of having to be high maintenance or attractive to an audience especially as a woman it's just too much for me to handle I'm like <laughs> honestly, I ain't with all that shit much. I'm in my bed I feel like I want to do this I have to, the moment I've done the makeup I've done it before I might not even feel like I want to do it anymore because mm-hmm. that whole hour maybe my emotions are just this and that this and maybe it's not really coming out as strong and stuff but for me I just see it as men don't have to do anything for, for us to love them when a guy does this type of content or when a guy when a guy does I don't know any type of any form of entertainment or when a guy exists we don't expect them to like you know be, to be showing out for us you know what I mean mm-hmm. but when it's the other way around I don't want to ever feel subjected to the male gaze or to be subjected to people's um, this and that because I just see it as you don't see me as a man see me as a guy then I don't mind because mm-hmm. 
let's say if 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 a celebrity like I don't know like any other male celebrity or any other you don't come and be like oh my god they're not wearing makeup now they're dead they're dead this and that blah 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 but it's only in subject to us but I feel like that's only in subject to us for the male gaze yeah if I feel like I want to produce something online I'll just go and put it on because I like, I won't do it it's true I won't do it I literally won't do it and the fact that like Another thing is people loving it despite what I look like. For me, me looking like this is a bonus. Yeah. Because I've already, I've, I've done what I've done to get here for me to speak to you. So now I can do the makeup. Now I can do this. But at the end of the day, God didn't create me like, you know, for that God has created me to show what I have within me. And at the end of the day, the plain face that I have is the same face that God has given me yeah. to use this life. The same way you look at a man and be like, oh, that's the face that God has given me. Same thing with me. Same thing with me. I don't think things should be too different because I'm a woman. Do you know Absolutely. What I mean? Do you know what? I'm so pleased you said that because Her. you are so unapologetically yourself. Not only are you uh, you. creative, but you're also beautiful and you're Thank also you. so, so knowledgeable. But guys, guess what? We're finished. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, if you want to lay back, do you know I'd love to have you back, you know. I'd love to have you back. Sorry, what does it mean? I would love to have you back. Honestly, that was so inspiring. I'm so happy. But guys, in fact, let, guys, let me talk to you a lot for a minute because you lot never want to comment on my stuff underneath. What's going on? I want to talk to you a lot in the comments because I actually like seeing everyone's comment, comments. Though. Yeah, comment. Tell me how you found it. If you want me and Elaine to work again together, put it in the comments. We can chat. I actually talk to people in the comments, you know, but you know, these days, I don't know what I've done to you. Like, if I did anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It's because you're addressing the people up, up shit. You know, she cares. She's yeah, I love you so lot. I love you lot. You lot do I mean, yeah. guys, come on, man. I follow people. Yeah. Come in. Uh-uh. <laughs> I tell you, love me. I love you. Come on. <laughs> but guys, thank you so much. It's Elaine, baby. Thank what do you, you mean? Mad and dress right here. Listen, listen, guys. I'm so happy, guys. Two queens with each other, man. I'm on it. I'm on it to be here, bro. Listen, Don't understand. Grand. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you Thank like you it, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you again next week with another bad B. Period. I love you guys, and I'ma see you soon. Bye.